Hello, I'm Sarah from South London Sling Library and today I'd like to talk to you about using the Manduka XT with a smaller baby. The Manduka XT is a brilliant option for babies who are um, coming to the end of the fourth trimester. They're outgrowing their stretchy wrap or stretchy style sling. Um, this will take you from that point up to um, or anywhere between two and three years of age, depending on how quickly your baby grows. Um, there are various ways to wear it. Um, we're going to be looking at that kind of age today, the sort of end of the fourth trimester, and we're going to be wearing it with crossed straps. I'll do another video showing you how to use it with rucksack style straps because some people prefer that as an option. The great thing about the Manduka XT is it allows you to do both. So try it with both um, strap configurations and see which you like. Um, it's a really good sling. It's adaptable for people of different body sizes and shapes. Um, so it's a really good one if you know you're sharing your carrier, um, as long as you, everybody who's going to use it knows how to adjust it to fit them, um, it could be a really good option. So what we're going to do is I've got the um, ellipse section in the carrier, in the body panel here, um, just to give some extra height to it, because the baby that I'm, the demo doll that I'm going to be using today is the size of a baby coming to the end of the fourth trimester. Um, they're gaining head and neck control, but it's perhaps not entirely there. Um, I still want to give them that increased uh, support up to the nape of their neck. Um, as they get bigger, if I want to take this out and allow them to get their arms out over the top of the sling, then they can do that. Um, and then as you need extra height in the body panel, you can put it back in, or you can take it out completely and fully extend the body panel by another kind of two or so inches. Um, but I've got it in today. You also want to make sure for a baby of this size that your adjustable seat is on its smallest size setting. So just by pulling the um, looped sections around the waistband all the way into the middle, um, that's as small as it's gonna go. And then as your baby gets bigger, you just pull those sections out to increase the size of the seat until you've got it all the way on the bigger size setting. So seat all the way in, I'm then going to take that waistband and I'm going to flip it in towards me and you want to put it around your natural waist really. Um, with a baby this age you don't want to wear it around your hips because um, it's going to sit their bottom too low on your body. So up around your natural waist, take the buckle behind you, get it clipped in. To tighten this, if I hold the strap near the buckle, I can then just kind of push it across my body. It doesn't need to be corset tight, you just want it to be tight enough um, that it's not going to move around while you're wearing it. Um, I'm then just going to make sure those are nice and flat against my body. Um, and then I'm ready to pick my baby up. I've got nice long shoulder straps, so my shoulder straps are completely unbuckled um, because I'm going to cross the straps behind me today. So, this is Sydney. Um, and all I'm going to do is concentrate on holding Sydney here on my chest with their head on the flat part of my chest, which is up where I would want a baby of this age. I don't want them up here in front of my face. There's no point putting them over my shoulder and then trying to put the sling on because they're in the wrong place. So I'm going to hold Sydney down here where I want them to sit in the sling. Now, Sydney's very loose limbed these days, been in an awful lot of slings over the years. Um, so Sydney would very happily kind of wrap their legs around me. That's not what you need your baby to do. What you want to try and get your baby to do is lift their knees. So just get them into that kind of seated position. It's just much easier to get a carry around them like that than if they've got their legs hanging down and you're trying to bring the body panel up over them. It's, that's just not going to work. So just encourage your baby to bend their knees um, and get them into that kind of seated position. You may find that you then need to kind of squish the body panel of the carrier just to get it between your baby's feet, but that's absolutely fine. Once you've done that, you're just gonna roll it around their body. I can then pop the straps over my shoulders like so. Then to get it done up, 
I can already feel that the waistband is taking some of Sydney's weight. I'm just supporting their upper back. So I've got a free hand. I can take this free hand and I'm gonna go underneath this first strap. I'm not gonna hold it. I'm just going straight underneath so that I can reach the shoulder strap on my opposite shoulder. I'm then gonna pull that straight down towards the floor first. If I grab hold of that strap and pull it round like that, if this is gonna end up coming up into my neck muscles and I really don't want it there. It, over time, it will become uncomfortable. So if I reach behind me and pull straight down to the floor first, it anchors the strap out here on the bony section of my shoulder um, and that will be more comfortable for me. I'm then going to bring it low around my body and up to the buckle at the side here. I can then plug into that buckle, pull backwards to tighten, and then just in front of the plastic buckle, I have an extra little strap that I can pull forwards as well. Now that dual adjust action is brilliant. The forwards pull is often a slightly easier action. Um, and where that kind of dual adjust aspect comes into its own, is if you know that you're gonna take the sling off and you're going to be the one putting it back on again later, what I would do is then leave this strap alone. This one is now as tight as I want it. What I can do before I take the carrier off, loosen that front buckle and undo, because then next time I go to put it on, I've just gotta bring this strap around, pull to the floor, bring it round, plug it in, and then pull forward and I'm done. So that can be really handy. So once I've got that one done up, sorry, Sydney. Once I've got that one done up, I'm going to do exactly the same on the opposite side. So find my strap, pull to the floor, quick tip. If you uh, put your hand behind you and you can't find the strap, what we all do is we all lean backwards. Can you see that strap getting further away from my body? So if you can't find your shoulder strap, lay your hand across your back, a hand across your baby to support them and then lean forwards and it just falls onto your arm. You can then find out where it is. Pull straight down to the floor, low around my body, up to the buckle at the front, pull backwards. Sometimes I do it with my right hand on the left side because actually I'm very right-handed and then I can use the smaller strap to pull forwards. There we go. And there's Sydney, nicely seated in my Manduka XT. Um, in terms of safety, the safety in the Manduka XT is exactly the same as every other sling or baby carrier. The word to remember is ticks. You want to be able to tick all your safety boxes. Sydney is nice and tightly held against me. That's the T. If I put my hand on the back of their head, do a little dip forward, I don't feel their body weight pull away from me at all. The I stands for in view. Now, because the carrier just comes to the nape of Sydney's neck, um, and if the, it's nice and open, I can see Sydney's face very, very easily without having to move any fabric or anything. The C stands for close enough to kiss. Now, honestly, this is about boobs. So if you don't have breasts or soft chest tissue and your baby sits a little bit lower on your body, they're just out of kissing range, not a massive disaster, as long as you're happy that their airways are open. If you've got breasts or soft chest tissue, you need your baby to be on the flat part of your chest above that tissue so that they can't snuggle in and accidentally close their airways. The K stands for keeping Sydney's chin off their chest. I know that Sydney's chin is off their chest because I can see the tip of their nose. If their chin was on their chest, their nose would be pointing at the floor. The S stands for supported spine. If I pop a hand on Sydney's back and lightly press, Sydney doesn't have extra space to get closer to me, uncurl or sit up. So I know that Sydney doesn't have extra space in the sling that they could slump into, put their chin on their chest and close their airway. To um, use the headrest, should I feel like I needed extra head support? Most of the time when I'm upright, I don't need, coming into the nape of the neck, to, neck is perfectly fine. I don't need any additional head support. And as babies get older, they really don't even want it that high. Top of their shoulders will be absolutely fine as they're gaining that head and neck control. If I felt like I wanted extra head support, say for example, I was having to clean up after my dog, um, and I didn't have a hand free to support my baby's head as I bend down, 
just tucked into the top edge of the carrier here, you have a sleep hood. What I can do with that sleep hood is if I needed extra head support, I mean, for starters, you can roll it and then just use the elastic loop on the end around the strap and the button. So that would, um, you do that on both sides, that extends the, the height slightly. So if Sydney's very asleep and I've got stuff to do, or I'm walking the dog and there's the inevitable mess on the floor, I can use that headdress just as a little bit of extra head support so that I can bend down and use both my hands without having to hold Sydney's head. Most of the time when they're upright, they're not gonna need that. Um, and so leave it down as long as the carrier's into the nape of their neck, that's all they need. As they get older, this has different uses, um, but I'm, I'll address that in, in the other video. Um, yeah, to take it off, I'm gonna support Sydney's weight, I'm gonna find my buckle at the side, I'm gonna unclip, and then I can swap hands, unclip at this side, and then I can literally peel the carrier from Sydney to get Sydney out. Now, if I were not going to take the carrier off completely, I would grab those buckles, just tuck them in my waistband, so that as I'm walking around the house, it's not a trip hazard, it's not gonna try and kill me. Uh, if I wanted to take the, the carrier off, if I slightly loosen that buckle and just swish it around in front of me, because the Manduka XT has a security button on the waist belt, so if you squeeze the sides and press the middle, then it comes undone. Um, don't get stuck in your Manduka XT. <laughs> Um, so I hope that helps. That's how to use your Manduka XT with a smaller baby uh, and crossed straps. If you'd like any support from the Sling Library, you can find all our details at southlondonslings.co.uk. Um, and if you've just appreciated our free content here on YouTube, you can always support the South London Sling Library by using the Buy Me A Copper, I do like tea, uh, Buy Me A Copper link in the description below. Thanks a lot and I'll see you soon. Bye.